What up guys, Phil here today coming from the uh, house, um, back from Haiti for a bit, uh, for a, quite a while of a bit actually because I'm on the injured reserve, I uh, tore my knee up like an idiot um, skiing over the Christmas holiday, so get a little time off, get time to do some videos I guess while I'm healing, but uh, anyway, torn ACL, torn meniscus, anyways, so there's been a lot of uh, responses on my uh, tin can arrowhead video. I realized I showed how to make the arrowhead, but I never put it on an arrow or ate it and shot it. And uh, been a lot of questions and comments on there about the effectiveness of it and if it would work, you know, in an actual hunting situation. <clears throat> so today, while I had it, sorry about that, I'm kind of sick. But uh, so today, while I have a little time, I'm going to take some of these bamboo uh, shoots I cut down a year or two ago. Try to straighten a couple shafts out real quick. I got my can. That's what I'm going to use for the arrowheads. So, um, sometimes when you go to Lowe's or whatever and get those garden stakes, you'll find some like this. But the good thing about this particular piece is you got a node here, and then about a foot, maybe 14 inches to the next node. So that's only two nodes you have to fix. So in this arrow, I bend this piece straight, put my tip here. Bend this one. This piece looks pretty straight right through here. And then bend this one back up. And then that should be the arrow right there. So whenever you can find the nodes really far apart, that'll save you a lot of time and effort on your bamboo arrows. And uh, so even though this looks really bad, it's a lot easier to straighten one like this than uh, one with that looks see that may look straighter than this, but have like a node every three or four inches so look for that when you harvest your bamboo or if you're looking for them in the garden stakes section of the Home Depot there or wherever All right. okay I got me some gloves the first place we're gonna heat is in between the nodes straighten that little piece out this one's pretty good it's got a little not a little bit right here it needs to you know adjust so I'll do in between the nodes get everything straight and then heat the nodes next Now on my uh, pineapple broadhead video there was a couple questions about how I made that, how I got the third point out of that. <clears throat> when you fold your tin can over, you got a tin can lid. Uh, this is off of a Cafe Bustello coffee can. The one on my other video I used a pineapple can, but it don't really matter. It seems like it's the same thickness. So you, you bend it over, you break it, then you have two pieces like this. You take this piece and you fold it and you break it and you have two pieces like this. Then you take this piece and you fold it over one more time. You just fold it and then you have this. What you do now is take and imagine or either you can measure it and draw a line right down the middle symmetrically down the middle of this and uh, then it's good to put a like your multi-tool or something right on that line you know right in the middle like that and you can open it up on my video I messed up on editing on that because <clears throat> what you really want to do before you open this back up is cut you some notches in it now when you do this part depending on how you cut your notch for your arrowhead if you're trying to make a, a fish a fish arrow cut it more like this and you'll leave a barb on there okay let me, let me turn it like this so you can see what I'm talking about if you cut it down at an angle like this that will leave you a point right here on each side if you cut it straight across you know that'll be okay if you cut it like this it makes it really easy to get out of an arrow quiver you know what I mean because you'll have like a, a diamond shape cut it like this you'll have a point it may be hard to get out of a quiver but it'll also be hard to get out of a fish or something so the fish one you'll come in at an angle like this come down about right dang I got 10 snips in this is hard okay 
Oops. So I cut one side, I'll come in and cut the other side. That's probably too close. And get it, you know, even. Yeah, even with actual tin snips, that's not the easiest chore. Okay, so now you got that cut like that. <clears throat> On your folded side, grab it with your pliers, right by the tip actually. And then you can, if you lock it down with your pliers or just hold it with your Gerber tool for a second, you can take it and open it on these other two edges. And this is sharp now, but I'll be careful. Open it like that. And sometimes you might need another tool. And I should have got my channel locks. I knew I should have. I think I grabbed the wrong thing. I grabbed these wire snips instead. But you can take it and manipulate it down. And if you can get that to roll all the way to the tip, you'll be doing good. That's the hard part. That's why you need, I don't suggest reaching up there at this point to grab that and bend it over. And this, I definitely don't recommend doing this part with wire cutters, but that's what I got. So do this with another set of pliers and you'll be in business and it won't be so raggedy looking. But once you get it back a ways, move your plier down a little bit back right in the middle and continue to spread that back open and you're basically just making a little tiny uh, tin paper airplane and you mess with that and get it just right there you go now we'll put this on the end of this arrow all right here's that same piece of bamboo after i got done straightening it out with some heat and uh, it's good to leave it long 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 straighten it out in a long long piece it makes it a lot easier and like I said, keep your nodes as far apart as possible. I'll just come in here and score this around. A lot of people like to put their thumb right over that and turn it. I don't like that because it usually puts a lot of splinters in your thumb. I generally tend to put my thumb off to the side like this a little bit when I score it. That way if you slip or whatever, if it ends up coming through, you don't slice your thumb right off. Whenever you go, so I just kind of score it like this. And this thing's super sharp. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Nice clean cut on some hard bamboo like that. That's, that's perfect. Put that arrowhead right in the end of that shaft like that. And wiggle it. That will give you three splits. Take it out. Turn it a quarter turn. And do it again just to make sure you're running that cut side through each, both sides. Okay, now once you got that split, you don't want to put it in there with that flat like that. So it's better to come in and round that off somehow. Let's see how's the best way. So you have something that looks like that. Your splits in between, right here. And then you can just take your arrowhead turn it back around the right way and stick it in there I'm trying to go right back in that same split so I don't mess you up bend all these things over that I was talking about earlier all these pieces where we cut see I'm just folding those over like right here would be good. I don't need to leave enough room though when I split it that I'll be able to put my feather in there. So that looks good. The node's right there so that should be perfect. So I'll just a little bit more. It's like I have enough flinch. That's not really going to be long enough for two arrows out of this so I'll just do one. All right, now I could split it with this big giant thick ass <laughs> Scandy knife but uh, I don't think that would be very good. So I'll get my open all since it's right, super thin. Kind of got my crutches all tactical out here. It makes it easy carrying junk back and forth. <laughs> got me an open nail in there. Got my uh, Swiss 
the farmer. I got this bone to burnish the arrow if I needed to. Uh, emergency slingshot. <laughs> Just in case, you know, you never know. I have a little bone. Of course, then I got my beer cup holder and my uh, mag light there on the side so I can see where I'm going at night. <laughs> and uh, got me a little uh, woodsman there on the side and some custom uh, leather uh, armrest vests. <laughs> so I've been customizing my old get around tools there. So, anyways, so here's my tip in. Uh, Cafe Bustello Broadhead. It's on there pretty good. Got me a nice straight shaft of bamboo now. Okay, <clears throat> I got my arrow whipped uh, right to here. I'm going to take my open L since it's got a nice thin blade, razor blade on it, and I'll hook it right on the look at your arrow. Decide which side you want up and down. It don't really matter, it should be straight. But I'll make it so my broad hits straight up and down right there. And I'll put this right on there, exactly in the center. Now, and you got a whip right here already. <laughs> I'm trying to do my best to get this arrow done by NARC. It seems like every batteries are dying, in sufficient space. <laughs> I'm just going to do the one arrow and shoot it for you guys. Boop. Cut your little knock right in there. Come across straight and just kind of go up easy with it. This is where a nice little pocket knife comes in handy. You don't have a big old SE6 in there trying to do this. I'll touch that up a bit with a file or something. But there you go. Split knock. There it is. Now, take your feathers. Split it, put one in there on one side. Okay, because this is bamboo, you know, you got all that room inside the, the pith, the node, the, the hollow spot in there for your uh, the veins to fit the. Uh, not the veins. Yeah, the veins, the piffy part of the feather. <clears throat> All that goes inside. And I kind of like that because when you shoot it, there's no way you're going to get quilled in your hand because there's not in, any quill exposed. It's all inside the split. I'm just going to tie it really tight. Give it about an inch of whip. Serving. And hopefully that'll be enough to at least be able to shoot it a couple times and demonstrate some effectiveness of the tip. That's what we're into anyways. The tip. Like I said, if you had some duct tape in your pack, you could just make duct tape fletchings. I'm sure y'all all know about that. Um, if not, leave me a comment and I'll make you some duct tape arrows. Or show you the ones I already got in the shed. Because they're pretty funny. Now, I'll go get me a bow and a new battery again, because that one's dead too, it looks like. And uh, see what we can do with this bad boy. This thing's looking like it's ready for some business, huh? Yeah, let's see what we got. These, being like this, when I pull them out of the target, that's probably going to rip the hell out of the target. Whereas if it was like a diamond, it'd probably save the target a bit. But this is all pure speculation. We're about to shoot it and see. I got my 38-pound uh, Black Locust self-bow out here. Not really self bow because I put a cable back on it, but I still like to say it's a self bow because I made it all by myself. No, I know that's not what I mean. <clears throat> all right. Let's see if this bad boy works. Right away, I can tell that I made it on a way too thick of bamboo stick. Let's see what we can do to that old bad boy with it. Duck Dynasty Tart. Exercise my limb a little bit. Mm. 
there ain't no doubt in my mind this is going to be a kill shot. Okay, ready? That's only about 20 feet away. Here we go. All right, it's a little high. Let's zoom in on that. Let's see how much penetration that was. That wasn't a full draw either. I was <coughs> skeptical because of the bow not being used in a while. Nothing done to the tip. Still true. All right. Sometimes you can grind that knock in just a little bit like that. That will mess your serving up though, so I don't recommend it too much. There we go. Now I'm not afraid of it. Went in that far that time. Well, this is what it looks like after coming out of the target again. Nothing. No effect. I think the main thing that's <clears throat> impeding penetration is how it's not actually flush with the, uh, you can see all that foam in that hole now. The foam from my target's just filling that hole up. So that's definitely impeding penetration. So if I'd have made this thinner off the bat, so this is probably about 3 eighths thick. So if I would have went down to 5 sixteenths, or something like that with a stiffer, smaller arrow, then uh, you wouldn't have had so much, you know, so much of that. It's trying to push all that big, thick arrow through there. But uh, for small game, no problem, man. No problem at all. Put a four shaft in there, you know, get that smaller, and do that too. But uh, this is good. I'm gonna shoot it right at that oak tree. Just blatantly shoot it at that oak tree over there and uh, see what happens. There's a little squirrel perch on there that, uh, that I'm gonna try to hit, which is juniper. And uh, you put suet on there and stuff. I'm gonna see if I can hit that with my hand. Okay, so the test is uh, a little bit concluded here. Um, oops. <clears throat> so I shot it directly at that oak tree. It uh, demolished my poor little head here. <laughs> I don't know shooting at the oak tree is the uh, best thing to do with this kind of thing, but. I missed. I when it hit the oak tree, it split. This isn't the best piece of bamboo either. It was already kind of splitting to begin with, but it totally split the whole front of it. And uh, I guess you can see that split the whole front out. So that sucks. This arrow's cached. <laughs> oh well, and broke the end. So that was already broke too, but <laughs> now it's really broke. <laughs> All right, this bow's still badass with the right set of arrows. This thing's, pfft. and even with that one, I got really close to the bullseye, which I was really surprised with. Uh, here's my black locust bow again. For anyone that didn't see that on the first video, oh, it looks pretty in that sunset. <laughs> Got my Eskimo twist on there for backing. And uh, toggled off right here.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. These assholes in the neighborhood don't want me to do a video. <laughs>